Okay, hello everybody. We're just about a minute away from getting started. Um, so I'll just wait before we begin in earnest. Um, if you have any questions, please enter them into the chat box. And uh, hopefully you can see me and hear me. Again, if you can't, please enter them into the chat box. Um, but I will get started uh, right now, actually. So let's uh, let's begin as soon as my slides load. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about Read by QXMD, um, and I'll just be sort of walking you through it. Uh, perhaps you've heard of it, perhaps you haven't, perhaps you've used it, um, but hopefully there will be something here for all of you. Uh, so in terms of what I'm going to cover today, I'm going to briefly describe the WRHA virtual library and its services, including what services we're offering during the COVID-19 crisis and which ones we aren't. Um, I will describe what Read by QXMD is and how it can help you. I'm going to demonstrate how to set up Read QXMD or by QXMD on both desktop and on mobile. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to link uh, read to the WRHA virtual library in order to access the subscription content that the virtual library has that if you weren't connect if you didn't connect your read you'd hit a paywall at um, and then I'm going to generally demonstrate how to use it so to begin uh, the WRHA virtual library who are we uh, we provide services uh, library services and resources to WRHA staff uh, staff of eligible community health agencies um, and eligible personal care homes. Um, so we provide access to an array of electronic databases and online resources, so Medline, CINAHL, um, well, there are quite a few other ones, UpToDate, uh, Lexicon, um, and if you go to our website and go to the A to Z list, you'll see the listing of resources that we have access to. Um, we also provide library services, including literature searches, uh, document delivery. So if there's something that we don't have access to that you want at, like direct access to, that you still want, you can put in a request through document delivery and we'll send it to you. Um, normally, we would be able to provide you with physical books and items. Uh, right now, during the COVID-19 crisis, we aren't providing physical resources. We're only providing electronic resources. So that's the extent of the services that have been curtailed by COVID-19. Everything else is functioning as normal. Um, we also do education and training sessions. Um, in this case, there'll be online education training sessions. Uh, so like this one, or we'll do ones on request on any topic that you want to talk about or that you want us to talk about as long as it's, you know, within the wheelhouse of a librarian. Um, so that's who we are. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, so what is READ? Uh, it's a personalized tool for accessing and tracking information. I, I think the best way to word it is it's sort of an aggregating service. Um, so if you want to keep track of, say, specific journals or specific articles or specific subject areas, topics, that sort of thing, you can use Read to put together these lists and then you'll get notifications, you'll get alerts uh, when new information is available uh, from this journal, from this author or in this subject area. And it'll be sent right to your, your phone or your email or whatever you decide to have it set up as. Um, you can also annotate content in Read. So if you wanted to, if you had a, an article that you thought was really good and you wanted to make a point of it, um, you can jot that down in there um, and you can make these comments public. Um, you can also create collections. Uh, so if you're, if you're collecting or if you have articles on a specific topic and you, you want to either keep them for yourself to reference later, like these ones were really good for this area that I'm looking at, or you wanted to share it with your colleagues, put it together and say, you should be reading these articles, you should be looking at these articles, um, you can do that in Read as well. So it's not just a service for you, it's a service that can be used to help you connect with others to help you 
um, work together with uh, your colleagues, um, either here or elsewhere. Uh, so getting set up, uh, this is a little flyer that they sent us, the QXMD team. Um, and it's it's got all the information you need really to get started. Um, and if this was a physical in-person session, I would actually be handing these out to all of you, but it's not, um, so that's fine. Uh, but I'll still walk through all of these steps because it, you know, it helps to see it happen. Um, and a note, if you go to the virtual library page, um, in our uh, find information section, we have an area or a page that's dedicated to read what it is, setting it up, um, making sure that you've connected it to the WRHA virtual library. So that's sort of like the Coles Notes version of this talk that I'm giving you today. Um, and so you can see the website there at the bottom, uh, our, our general page slash WRHA slash read underscore by underscore QXMD. Um, so you can just go there instead of going through all the steps that I've posted here because it's got the same information um, that I will be covering as well. Um, so in terms of the desktop setup, if you want to have this set up on your computer, uh, you want to go to the site that I've listed at the bottom of this page, https colon slash slash read.qxmd.com. Um, and you'll see something that looks like this. Now, I couldn't quite go through the desktop version of it because, well, because I'd already, I've already set up my account. And so having you know, I can I can only sort of um, I can only log in, so I couldn't take screen caps for you. But um, you'll see in the top right hand corner there, there's a sign up button, and you'll want to click on that, and that will take you through a relatively straightforward process that will ask you information about who you are, what kind of information you're looking for, what your subject area is, that sort of thing. Um, and you can see. This is what the, the desktop layout looks like. You can see that we've got, um, it's, it's put featured papers together for you. Um, but you can also see, and this will be more relevant once you log in, that there's followed journals, followed collections, my keywords and my favorites. And so these are all things that you've put together as things that matter to you. Um, and you can also see that each one of the the papers. Um, it's got the number of views and it's got the title and some of the abstract, but it's also got, oh, okay, well, these ones with green, these are reviews. And then there's the purple and this is a randomized controlled trial. So immediately you get a sense of not only which papers are there for you, but what they are um, in a very easy to access way. And it's not necessarily set up for all of them. I suspect that that has to do with what metadata is put into their record and what read by QXMD can pull out, um, but you still get a sense for a lot of the papers. Hmm. Okay, so uh, once you're set up, once you've got an account ready to go, you've got your account settings here. So you can see I've got my name, I've got my profession, and it's got specialities. Um, and when you select a specialty, it'll, Put you, it'll suggest uh, journals or topics um, to, to help you get set up in following certain things. Um, unfortunately for me, there's no medical librarianship or librarianship area of this. Um, so I went down to the bottom and selected zoology uh, just because, because why not? Um, and then you'll see under account settings, uh, now I didn't take a screen cap of this, but they've got email notifications. So this tells you this helps you set up, well, do you want email notifications at all, or do you only want to see this when you log in to read? And if you do want email notifications, what sort of notifications do you want? And that sort of thing. So, um, and then again, when you're logged in, this is what it looks like. Uh, I sort of already went through this, uh, but you can see that the featured papers are a bit different when you've got, um, I followed a few different topics, and so you can see that what is 
selected for me is different now than when I wasn't logged in. Um, and then at the top there, you can see, you can search uh, either papers or by topic. And this is searching, uh, in general, the content that Reed has access to. Um, and it's interesting to note that when you look at the mobile version, there are more search options. Now, this is the thing, Reed was developed to be a mobile app. The desktop app is not the best way to be looking at this, but uh, I mean, you've got more screen space on your desktop. You maybe don't want uh, some kind of work-related app pinging up on your phone all the time. Um, so this is this is a, a trade-off, right? Like there are benefits to having it on your desktop version, um, but there are desktop or there are benefits to having it on mobile as well. One of the main benefits to having to using the mobile version is that it was designed for mobile and it works better on mobile. Um, but they both work fine, except for really if you want to search for collections, in which case, as far as I can tell, you basically do need the mobile version. Um, so uh, if you, once you're logged in, instead of the login in the top right hand corner, you'll see your initials. So I've got mine there and there's all this sort of stuff. I'm going to show you a couple of select things. We already talked about account settings. I'm not gonna bother with public profile. Um, because it doesn't matter. But let's talk about subscriptions. So I sort of mentioned this, and when you set up, when you go through setup, they'll walk you through some of this to begin with, but you can also change it later through my subscriptions. So you go in here and you get to a page like this. Uh, these two side-by-side -side pages are actually just one after another. Um, it, it would just be a really long image, so I split it up. Um, so you can see there are specialties to follow. Uh, and so you can select, say, critical care, intensive care, or dentistry, or farther down there's zoology, which, as I said, I followed, um, animal behavior, biodiversity. Um, you know, there's there's a great deal of content, and so these are sort of curated lists that are put out that will help you set things up. Now, that may not be what you want. You may not want a list curated by somebody else. You may want to only curate things for yourself. Um, there are shared collections to follow. Now, the collections that they have here are collections that have been put together um, by certain journals, by certain medical organizations or health organizations or whatever. Um, you can just see a couple of the ones at the top there from the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, and so these may or may not be beneficial to you, but uh, you can also follow collections that have been put together by your colleagues or by other people that you know and trust who have made their collections public. Um, and as I say, I didn't see an obvious way to do this in the desktop version of it. So this is an area where you would need either a direct link to somebody's collection to follow it, which um, once you create a collection of your own, you'll be given a link and you can send that out to colleagues so that they can follow it. Or um, you need to do a search for the collection in uh, the mobile app. Um, but you can follow them and then you'll see them in your list. Um, you can also follow specific journals. Uh, there are quite a few. And then there are keywords. Um, so you can put in keywords that you think are relevant to what you're looking for. Or you really want to have a notification for every time this comes up as a keyword. So I've got history of medicine on mine, because that's an area that I personally care about. Um, but it wasn't an area where there was an immediately obvious specialty to follow. So, um, and you can just add as many as you want. Um, with any time you're creating your own keyword listing, I'd give it a bit to see how much value to noise you're getting, and you can always change it later. So for history of medicine, I've actually had almost nothing come up for this, and it's probably just a function of uh, what journals read by QXMD is searching for, but it might also be that I need to, to tweak it, right? Like I might need to change it to just history and then see what comes up. Um, but you might find if you're putting, say, myocardial infarction that you're getting thousands and thousands of hits, and that's not what you mean. You mean, oh no, I actually only mean 
this type of, or like in this context. And so you'd want to change those keywords. Um, so give it a bit of time to see if you've got a, a good ratio of relevant content to irrelevant content and, and change as necessary. Don't expect it to be a magic wand. You have to spend your own time curating this stuff. Okay, um, so then the other thing, and this is very important for Read by QXMD, is as, as you're going through the setup, you'll be asked to add an institution. Um, and as I said, I, I set my, up my Read account a while ago, so I couldn't actually show you screenshots, but you can also change your institution or set up an institution by again, going to the top right-hand corner and looking here and change my institution. Um, and so you see, you'll want to find Winnipeg Regional Health Authority Virtual Library. So you have to look for the whole thing. It's under Winnipeg Regional Health Authority, not under um, WRHA. Um, and so you have to scroll down through really quite a few institutions. Um, and then it will ask you for your login credentials. And those are the same login credentials that you use for the library. But once you've put it in there, you don't need to put it again and it will link up to our subscription resources so that it can, you don't have to separately log into the library to access the full text of the materials. You can instead have them just show up on your phone or on your desktop app. Um, I know that one of the things that people tend to complain about about the virtual library is how many times they have to log in and log out. And this is a way of bypassing that. You log in once and then I haven't been asked for my credentials again since I created my account. And I mean, I've actually deleted and re-downloaded and deleted and re-downloaded this app a couple of times on my phone and I barely log into it um, on, on uh, the desktop, not because it's not useful, but because it's, it's not, for me, it's not the best way to be accessing these resources, but it is a very good tool. Um, and I haven't been logged in, in all of that time, I haven't been asked to log in except for the first time that I logged in. Um, presumably if you do something like change your password, you would also have to log in again. Um, but yeah, it, it sidesteps a lot of the issues with logging in over and over again and allows you to access our resources without having to go through all the multiple logins, which I feel many people would appreciate, um, especially if you're just wanting to access the content very quickly. Uh, so in terms of mobile setup, you'll want to go to your app store or your Apple store. I don't have an Apple, so I don't remember what the store is called, but you go there, you look up Read by QXMD. Um, there are other QXMD products, so make sure you select this one in particular. Um, it looks like this. It's got the little file in the speech bubble, great. Um, so then you install it and this is what the, the mobile version looks like. So I actually find it much more user friendly and much nicer looking, uh, than the desktop version. So you can see I've got my featured articles here at the side or, or sorry, I've got my featured articles here in a row. Um, the little, uh, unlocked ones are showing you that you have access to these resources. Um, and so if you click on, like I'll, I'll walk you through some of what is in these areas. Um, and the, the sign up process, once you're in uh, the mobile app is very, very similar to the desktop version. So again, you just sort of have to create an account, say who you are, what your specialties are, what things you're interested in following. I'm not going to walk you through it again because it's basically the same. Um, but I will walk you through some key things. So uh, if you click, do you see the three bars on the top left-hand corner? Um, you get this listing of items here. Um, so you've got my dashboard, that's a general view where we are when we begin. Uh, there's institutional access. So that's where you add your library or change your library. That's where you would add the WRHA virtual library. My account details, app settings, that has to do with notifications. Uh, you know, if you wanted to actually notify you like a text message when you get something new, 
um, force refresh, log out, and then some general stuff. Um, so I will quickly walk you through the institutional access here because again, it is so important. You won't be getting the same quality out of read if you don't link it up to the virtual library where we pay for subscriptions and have access to things that the general read app won't because it will only have access to um, open access resources if you don't connect it to the virtual library. So you click on that and then again, same thing you want to uh, to log in to find Winnipeg Regional Health Authority library, virtual library. Um, and then it shows you like, oh, there's the automatic login. And then it'll show you uh, your username and that sort of thing. And, and the first time you set it up, of course, you'll have to show people or you'll have to put in your, your uh, credentials. You'll have to show the app that you actually do have access to this resource. Um, so going back to the, the featured page or the, the dashboard, um, what does the, what's the navigation of the mobile app like? Um, in the desktop, it was fairly straightforward. Everything was labeled exactly as what it is. But of course, in the mobile app, it's less clear. It's little icons. So we've got the dashboard app. This takes you back to this main page. You've got followed journals. So any journal that you've decided to follow, that will take you there. You've got your followed collections, any collection that you want. Um, you've got your followed keywords again. And so if you go to any one of those, you'll see the things that you're following. Your dashboard seems to always be featured articles, and this seems to be based on um, what you've said your specialties are, as well as a couple of ones that are just, they've decided they're cool articles and everybody should read them. Um, you've also got this favorites. Um, and this includes both your favorites, so articles that you have favorited, and private collections that you have created. So if you're looking for your own collection instead of the followed collections, that's where you want to go. And then there's the search function. And as I say, the search function on the mobile is better than the search function on the desktop because you can not only search papers and topics, but you can also search collections. So you can search for other people's collections if you know a colleague has created something good that you want to look at. Um, and then you can also subscribe to items. Um, like if you're if you're wanting to figure out how to subscribe to journals or collections or whatever, um, you oh I didn't draw the arrow, um, but it's in my dashboard uh, the settings where you can add new things to to subscribe to. Um, or oh yes I did I pointed to sorry I've got the the controls for the webinar software over top of the little arrow that I had point to my dashboard. So that's where you would add keywords, where you would add uh, journals that you wanted to search for. Um, so in terms of what does it look like when you actually get in to the article? So when you've got an article that you have and it's a PDF version, you get something like this. You can see the main page and then the other pages at the bottom there. Um, and that little grid function shows you all of the pages. So you can just, if you know what you need is on page 18, you can just click on that page directly without having to scroll through everything to find it. Um, so that's good. Um, and then there's other stuff. If you really like this article, you can press the star button and that will add it to your saved art, your favorited articles, your saved articles. Um, and you can also specifically add it to a collection. You can create a new collection or you can add it to an existing collection. So creating a new collection, it looks like this. You give it a name, you give it a description, and then the default is to make it a private collection. But if you're interested in sharing it with, say, colleagues or with the general public, then you want to make it public. And when you make it public, uh, other people can search for it by the name of the collection, but you will also receive an email that has a link that you can share with your colleagues. And that email seems to take a couple of hours um, to get through because I created this collection last night and I didn't receive the email for it with the collection uh, address until the next morning. So uh, I guess be aware of that, the time that it takes to share something like that. Um, and then what does your collection look like? So you've created it, it shows you what papers are in it, how many papers, um, how many. Uh, followers you have, 
and that sort of thing, as well as options to edit it. Um, as you can see, this collection has, there's no unifying factor, but ideally if you were creating a collection, you'd maybe want to be creating one on a, on a specific subject. Um, you can also annotate things, as I say, uh, and basically the annotation function works like there's a comment section at the bottom. Um, and uh, you do that by pressing the little speech bubble there. And uh, yeah, these comments are, I believe, general default public. I think you can make them private as well. Um, so in terms of access, when you're at the general page before you go to the PDF section, you'll see it takes a little while to load, but then at the bottom it'll show you either view as PDF or view on the web. And these are, if you have direct access to it, you just click on those and you'll immediately see it. Um, now there are some that, I mean, the virtual library, we don't subscribe to everything. Uh, so you will occasionally come across articles where PDF not found, tap here for options. And it'll show you a couple of different options. One of them is usually like, see this record on PubMed. Um, and then maybe PubMed will have a link to an open access version. But Usually, if they have that, Reed would have found it and linked there. Um, but do by all means check it out, but assume that you can't uh, access it directly. Uh, you can give it a shot. Um, and there's, there's an option in the app itself that says request the article. Now, what that does is it sends sort of a, a notification to the Reed QXMD team and then eventually at some nebulous point in the future, they will send us a report that says, hey, people were kind of interested in this article. It is not the way that you should be actually requesting articles. Um, and I will walk you through the process of like, okay, I want this article on variation in uh, coronary angiography and revascularization procedures. Um, so you want this one, it's not available through read. What do you do? Okay, well, there are two things. One, you can go to the virtual library homepage, type in the title, um, and then you can, if you find the article in our listings, you can click on it, and there should be a, like, maybe you'll see something that says WRJ this collection, um, and it just for whatever reason wasn't speaking to read, and you can after all access it directly, but in most cases, we won't have direct access to it, and you'll see WRHA order sources. And if you punch that in, uh, then it'll take you to our document delivery request page um, with the information for the journal article already filled in. Now, this article in particular didn't appear in our general search at all. So what do you do then? You can't just go and find it in our general catalog and request it that way with uh, the information from the journal auto filled in. So in that case, you want to go to services and you want to select order sources. Um, and when you get to order sources, you'll be taken to this page. There's the user request form there in blue. And if you click on that, you'll be taken to a page like this and you manually enter that information, uh, the information about the article. Uh, so the information from the journal and the article title and you know, as, as much as you can get, the page numbers, the authors, whatever. And then you agree to our services and click submit. And we will get it to you within three to five days. Uh, that's what we put on our thing. Realistically, we get it to you faster than that. Um, most of the time it has, because we have a higher volume of material right now due to the, the COVID situation, it is a little bit like previously we used to say realistically we get stuff to you within 24 hours and right now it's the wait time is a little bit more than 24 hours but basically that's what you do if we don't have direct access to it and uh does anybody have any questions i see that we are just on time there is one minute so i will sit here awkwardly and wait for questions um yeah Okay, well, it doesn't look like there are any questions and it doesn't look 
like there's anybody here. so i will stop this now. thank you for joining me.